So far, we have been generating text responses from AI, and that is great for chat interfaces and content generation. But here's the thing. When you're building the front end of an application, you often need data in a specific format. Think about it. If you're building a recipe app, you don't want the AI to just write paragraphs about cooking. You need ingredients as a array, steps in order, cooking times as numbers. Or if you're building a task management app, you need tasks with specific properties like title, priority, and due date. You could try to parse the AI's text response and extract the data yourself, but that's messy and error prone because what if the AI formats things differently each time? This is where structured data generation comes in. We can tell the AI exactly what shape we want the response in, and it will give us back proper objects and arrays that we can use directly in our code. Let me show you how this works by building a recipe generator. Users will enter a dish name and will get back a properly structured recipe with ingredients and steps. First, we need to define what structure we want. For this, we will use Zod, which is a TypeScript first schema validation library. We have already installed it with the command npm install Zod. Now let's create our schema. In the API folder, create a new folder called structured data. Inside, create a new file called schema.ts. Start by importing z from Zod. Now let's think about what a recipe needs. It should have a name, a list of ingredients, and cooking steps. Let's define that. We'll export a constant called recipe schema. This is going to be a Zod object, so z dot object, with a recipe property that itself is an object, so z dot object again. We will start with just the name, which is a string. So name is of type string. Next, let's add ingredients. The ingredients property is an array, z dot array. Each item in the array is an object, so z dot object with name and amount, both strings. So name, z dot string, amount, z dot string. See how we are easily building this up because Zod lets us compose schemas from simple types. Finally, let's add the cooking steps. The steps is an array of strings. z dot array, z dot string. Each step is basically just text describing what to do. Perfect. We've used Zod to define exactly what shape we want our recipe data in. The AI will have to match this structure. Now the Zod schema, hopefully, is self-explanatory. If you want to understand more about Zod, please pause the video and refer to the documentation. If you are comfortable with this code, let's proceed. For our next step, let's create the route handler. In the same structured data folder, within the API folder, create a new file called route.ts. Start with the basic post handler structure. Export async function post parameter request of type request. Now we need to get the dish name from the request. So we're going to destructure dish by awaiting request.json. This will be whatever dish name the user types in. Now here is where it gets interesting. Instead of using generate text or stream text, we will use a new function called stream object. So at the top, import stream object from AI and OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI. Within the function body, call stream object with the model OpenAI GPT 4.1 Nano and a prompt asking for the recipe generate a recipe for the dish. But how does the AI know what structure we want? That is easy. We pass our schema to inform the AI of the expected output. So at the top, import the recipe schema from dot slash schema and add it to the stream object call. Property is schema and we set it to recipe schema. Now the AI knows exactly what structure to return. Finally, let's return the streaming response. So const result is equal to stream object, return result dot to text stream response. 
This method converts the result to a streaming response the client can consume. Finally, let's add error handling. Try block, catch the error, console.error, error generating recipe, and then return new response, failed to generate recipe, with a status of 500. Our route handler for generating structured data is now complete. Now for the UI. In the UI folder, create a new folder called structured data, and inside, create page.tsx. Let's start with the basic component structure. So use client at the top, export default function, structured data page, and we return the JSX. The UI is very similar to our previous components, so I'm going to go over this fairly quick. First, import use state from React and create state for the dish name. Let's call this dish name, set dish name, and the initial value is an empty string. For the JSX, we'll start with a container div and we'll leave space for structured data to be displayed. So structured data goes here. At the bottom goes our form. So form element, we add a div flex container to place the input and button side by side. Let's call this button generate, type is equal to submit, input placeholder is equal to enter a dish name. And since this is a Next.js plus AI course and not one on Tailwind CSS, behind the scenes, I'm going to add styling for all these elements. So div flex container, the form element, the inner div, which is a flex container to place the input and button side by side, all styled with Tailwind classes. You can see this UI in the browser by navigating to slash UI slash structured data. We have our input and the generate button. For our next step, let's bind the dish name state variable to the input. So value is equal to dish name. And on change, we get hold of the event and we call set dish name, passing in event.target.value. Now that we are managing the input state, the next step is to make the API call and get the structured data. And for this, the AI SDK conveniently provides a use object hook. Let's import it and use it in our component. Import experimental use object as use object from AI SDK slash react. We import the hook with an alias because it is still experimental, but the hook works just fine. Within the component, call the hook with our API endpoint. So use object, you pass in an object, with an API property set to slash API slash structured data. And we also need to set schema to recipe schema. The hook needs to know about our schema because it ensures type safety on the client side too. The hook returns a submit function with which we can send our API requests. Let's implement the submit handler. So const handle submit is equal to event of type react form event. We prevent the default form submission behavior. We call the submit function from use object hook, passing in dish set to dish name, and we clear the input. On the form element, we assign handle submit to on submit. So when you submit the form, the hook will make the API call to slash API slash structure data passing in the value of the dish, and the API will return structured data as it streams in. Let's destructure that value from the hook. We get access to it as object, and this will contain our structured recipe data, which we can render in the UI. So first, let's display the recipe name. So object, if it exists, and the recipe exists, we're going to render an h2 with object.recipe.name. I will style this with some Tailwind classes. You can see how TypeScript knows about the recipe structure thanks to our schema. Next, let's add ingredients. So right below the h2, curly braces for some JavaScript. So if object recipe ingredients exists, we return a div tag with an h3 
that says ingredients, and then another div tag. Within this div tag, we map over the list of ingredients, so object dot recipe dot ingredients dot map. We specify a callback function. We get access to the individual ingredient as well as the index, and we return a div element with key set to index, a paragraph rendering the ingredient name, and another paragraph rendering the amount. With some editing magic, I'm going to add tailoring classes to all these elements. Please remember, you don't have to follow how I am styling these elements, but if you want to, the code is in the GitHub repository and a link to that is in the description. All right, once we have rendered the ingredients, the next part is to render the cooking steps. So right after ingredients, curly braces again, object.recipe.steps. And if that exists, we render an element with an h3 that says steps and an order list where we map over the steps. So object.recipe.steps.map. We specify a callback function. And for each step with an index, we render a list item with key is equal to index and a span tag that renders index plus one followed by the step. And we're quickly going to style this section as well. All right, we are now rendering our structure data. The next step is to add a loading state. The use object hook provides an ease loading flag. Let's destructure it and use it to disable the button while loading. So disabled is equal to ease loading. We can also disable the button if there is no dish name. We can update the button text to show progress. So if we are loading, the text is going to be generating. Otherwise, it's going to be generate. Next, let's add error handling. Destructure error from use object. And in the JSX, right inside the container div, if there is an error, render a div with error dot message with some tailwind classes applied. Text red 500, margin bottom 4, and padding in the x direction 4. Finally, we can destructure the stop function from the hook to allow users to stop the streaming response if they want to. So destructure stop, and in the form, you can add a separate stop button, or you can also conditionally render either of these two buttons. In which case, this doesn't matter as much. So if is loading, I'm going to paste the JSX for a stop button, and if it is not loading, we render our existing button. And this can be just generate. For the stop button, we have on click is equal to stop. All right, there was a lot of code, but now it's time to see this in action. In the browser, navigate to slash UI slash structured data and try entering margarita pizza. Press enter. And you can see the AI generates the recipe with each part appearing as soon as it is ready. The dish name shows up first, margarita pizza, then ingredients, and then the steps as an ordered list. It's all properly structured data and not just text that we need to parse. Let's try another one, maybe chocolate chip cookies. Press enter and see how the structure is always consistent. We always get the dish name, and then ingredients with names and amounts, and then the numbered steps. Now I have used recipes as an example, but think about what else you could do with structured data. You could build product catalogs with prices, descriptions, and categories, analysis reports with data points and conclusions, task lists with priorities and due dates, quiz questions with multiple choice questions, and the possibilities are endless. The schema can be as simple or complex as you need. You can have nested objects, arrays of objects, optional fields, enums for fixed choices, numbers, dates, pretty much any data type you need. All right, that was a lot to learn. So let me quickly recap what we've built. 
First, we created a Zod schema to define exactly what structure we want from the AI. Then we used the stream object function in the route handler and used the schema property to let AI know of the structure we want. In the UI, we used the use object hook to consume that structure data as it streams in. We use the submit function to make the API call, object to get the structure data, ease loading to show a loading state, and error to show an error message. Throughout the JSX, we make use of optional chaining to check if the data exists before rendering it. The key point here is that we're not asking the AI to format text in a certain way and hoping for the best. We're defining a contract, a schema, and the AI has to fulfill it. This makes our application much more reliable and code much cleaner.